ever wondered why your best ideas happen in the shower? It turns out the science behind this phenomenon. And once you know how to activate the process, you can supercharge your creativity anytime, anywhere. So tell me this. When and where do you experience your creative blocks or find yourself circling endlessly around the same issue without resolution? Most of us get stuck like this at work, but it'll happen in other contexts too. Hobbies, creative pursuits, deciding what to cook for a dinner party, whatever. See if you can think of one example to keep in mind as you watch this video. Then, when you have it, we need to consider the opposite state of mind. So what are you usually doing when you have your very best or most innovative and exciting ideas? Do brilliant insights pop into your mind while walking, reading, bathing? Does exercise help? We'll all have slightly different answers to this question, but there are some activities and environments that seem to have a fairly universal effect on our creativity. And it's these we're gonna leverage with this tool I'm sharing today. By the way, my name's Hazel Gale. I'm a former therapist turned author and creator of the Betwixt app. And I'm aware that it may sound cliche to suggest that we have our best ideas in the shower, but it's cliched, it seems, because it's true. The shower effect is the term given to the particularly insightful and creative state of mind enjoyed often, but not always, in the shower. While showering, you're generally not focused on some work-related problem, which means your mind can wander, leading to ideas that might not have otherwise come up. Additionally, the shower can help by stimulating dopamine and creating an environment in which distractions are minimized and sensory input lessened because the white noise of the running water masks other sounds, you're generally in a small familiar space, etc. The shower effect, though, is not limited to washing, which is good because we can't all get in the shower every time we hit a block. In a 2019 study, 98 professional writers and 87 physicists recorded their most creative ideas each day, along with what they were doing and thinking when they occurred. While the majority of ideas cropped up at work, the ideas the writers and scientists had away from their jobs, i.e. while showering or exercising, washing the dishes, etc., were more likely to be aha moments that overcame a creative impasse. Moreover, this study found that we feel happier while engaged in this kind of mind-wandering than when actually on the task. So, rather than mind-wandering, which generally has negative associations, Schuler, the lead researcher on that study, calls this happy, productive and creative kind of thinking mind-wandering. It can happen during any non-work-related activity, as long as that activity sits in the sweet spot between too stimulating and not stimulating enough. If you're familiar with the work of Mihai Chisent Mihai, then you'll recognize these as the conditions for a state of flow. We can get into flow and start mind wandering when we're doing something that isn't so exciting we need to focus on it intently, but also isn't so dull we start to feel bored. Here's a cool little experiment that shows the shower effect, sans shower, in action. In a 2022 study, over 300 university students were asked to consider novel uses for ordinary objects such as a brick or paperclip. They were given 90 seconds to think of as many creative uses for these items as they could. The students then watched either a boring video of two men hanging out the laundry or the more engaging but likely familiar clip of the deli scene in When Harry Met Sally. This activity allowed time for the students' minds to wander. Afterwards, they were asked to come up with novel uses for ordinary objects a second time. Their mind wandering led to more creative ideas, but only for the students who watched the moderately engaging deli scene clip. The boring clip had no significant effect. The active ingredient here is the brain's default mode, a kind of hypnotic state we go into when doing something routine. That's how we find flow, achieve a little mind wandering, and have our most creative ideas. And the great news is that there are many, many ways to activate your default mode. Generic suggestions would include going out for regular walks, exercising or taking a shower, of course, but pausing work to do a little tidying, an easy crossword, cooking, knitting, doodling, or anything else you can get absorbed in without actually really having to think about what you're doing will likely have the same effect. I'd say the biggest challenge here is to have faith in the power of this tool. If you're anything like me, when stuck, you'll be tempted to keep hammering away at the problem convinced you just need to focus. In reality, you'll be much more effective with frequent breaks, so long as they meet the criteria outlined above. So, let's come back to the second question I asked right at the beginning of this video. When and where do you have your best, most innovative ideas? Your answers to this question, along with similar activities, will show you the way to your own mind-wandering hotspots. So maybe pay attention to this over the next little while. And as always, I'd love to hear your answers in the comments.